thanks again for tuning in to Lewis Precision Gunsmithing. It's always a pleasure to have you stop by. I hope that you'll find some of our videos of interest as we talk about uh, some of the guns that we get into our shop for repair. Today we're going to take a look at a, uh, a very good replica of a revolver. At least it seems like it's fairly well made. Uh, this is actually made by Great Western Firearms Company. Uh, they started in Los Angeles, California from 1954 till about 1964. Uh, many of the films that you might remember if you're around my age that were uh, made in Hollywood and other places um, actually had some of these revolvers, uh, some of the actors in those films actually carried these revolvers. Uh, one of them is Matt Dillon in Gunsmoke, if you remember that series. And then also John Wayne, who can forget about him? He's probably one of my greatest heroes as far as a Western star. And so it's, it's kind of been a, an adventure to take it apart and take a look at it and see just how similar it is in many ways to Colt's 1873. Now, we know that Colt quit manufacturing their the Peacemaker in about 1940, as I understand it. And I know this is not going to work because if this is not long enough, let me show you what's going to happen here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. What I've done is I've already put the uh, hammer in place. And the hand is right inside here. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll try to get this up close where you can see it. So right here we've got the hand and then uh, of course the hammer right in there and then this is your bolt. So your bolt and your bolt screw uh, screws in from this side goes in and holds your bolt uh, in place. Now uh, this bolt is activated by the spring, the sear spring that works on both the, uh, the sear or the trigger and also the, the bolt. So we're going to go ahead and put the trigger in next. So I'm going to try to turn this uh, a little bit difficult to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put the trigger in. I know my hands are in the way, but I can't, I can't help that. If I had somebody filming from up on top, I'd be able to see that. So you get that to go all the way in, and notice the bolt. Notice the bolt goes up underneath uh, the trigger pin or screw. So you want to lay that down flat. Be very careful when you put this together because you don't want to slip off of there with a screwdriver and cause a problem. You want to make sure you get started straight that everything is copacetic. Take the pressure off of that. Get your trigger over here where it goes. Okay, and you got that all the way through, and you got a little movement right there. See that? So you're good to go. And I'm not going to put this real tight, I'm just going to snug it up. Uh, so that you can see what's happening here. So I got everything I need on there in order to make this uh, to make this work. So I, I want what I want you to be able to see is is very importantly is when that sear is too short. When the sh when the sear is shorter, that means the hammer falls into the full cock notch sooner. And so the idea is timing here. So timing. So when you pull this back, you're going to see that. Okay, there's your load notch. You can see that. That's your load notch. I'm trying to get my hands out of the way for you so you can see what's going on. There's your load notch. And then when you pull this back, I want you to watch. See the load notch. Again, this is another important part. See how the bolt is out of the way right here in the frame? I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, the bolt is out of the out of the way. If I turn that up, you can see that it's flat. So that bolt is going to spin. That's your load notch. It's going to allow your cylinder to spin to load your, uh, load your gun. So what will happen is when I pull this back, since it's under spring tension, as soon, now listen, listen, watch what happens. Now see what happened was just prior to that falling in place, I pull that, it's going to go forward. See it goes down to load it, and just prior to when that kicks into the full cock notch, the bolt's not quite up yet. See that? See what happened there? The bolt's not up. So that's wrong. That's because this fell too soon. Now see what happens when I give it just a little bit more. Let's do it again. Very important. Load notch out of the way. The bolt's down so the cylinder rotates. As you bring the hammer back, the hand is pushing up on the ratchet pad rotating the cylinder. So what happens here, and I pulled that back too far because I'm trying to hold this. I'm going to try to do it very carefully. I apologize for that. So there it is. It's, it's rotating the cylinder theoretically. And I'm just going to try to get this just far enough that you can hear it. Okay, hear that? That just clicked into the full cock notch. That bolt should have been up right at that moment. Now you can see, if you look in here just right, 
you can see the light. Uh, let me zoom out just a little bit more. I'm doing this by myself, so it's a little bit difficult. So you can see right there is a dark spot, a piece of metal on the inside, right here between the frame of the gun and the cylinder, right in there. That is very uh, important that you see that. You can see it right there, right there. So what's going to happen is I'm going to try to keep this in focus for you, and I'm going to pull the hammer back, and when I do, you're going to see what happens to that bolt. You see the trigger start to move back just a little bit, and there, there's the, the bolts dropped out of the way. The cylinder is now rotating, and uh, the hand is pushing up against the ratchet pad, and then all of a sudden you're going to see that bolt come back into engagement. There it is. See it drop back in. Now, I don't have the hammer all the way back yet, but that bolt or cylinder lock is ready to catch that prior to the hammer, and you just heard that click. That was the full cock notch. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this again. I'm going to back up just a little bit so that you can see the, the, uh, tr the hammer and the trigger uh, at the same time to see what's going on. So right here, so you can see that bolt in there again. I'm going to start pulling the hammer back, and you're going to be able to see that start to drop out. There it is. It dropped out. It's gone. You can see the cylinder starting to rotate. Now you hear that's out of the way, and uh, you're going to see that come right back up. Just see that? The bolt just came back up and engaged the cylinder, and now the hammer's locked back. So that's completely opposite of what you saw with the single action army. And so this is what has to happen in order for the gun to be safe. When I get the other one back together, I'll show you what that looks like when it's done right. Everything seems to be fine. Ejecting a few cases here to take a look at the cases. Cases look good. Look like there's no headspace problems. So we should be good to go.